You have now arrived at Stadium and Gale. Boys and girls, ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Stadium and Gale with Uncle Silk. It's Dan. And Nick. Ah, quick pop-up show. What we got cooking, Dan? I was at the dentist, man. My mouth is half numb, but I'm with the shenanigans. What's up? Yeah, so emergency pod today. Uh, so Florida Gators today, uh, I don't think by their own volition, but by a Freedom of Information Act, uh, it was announced that three <laughs> coaches – uh, plus uh, three head coaches, plus a number of assistant coaches, and we'll go over those numbers here in a minute, uh, have been extended uh, and offered new contracts. Those include Dan Mullen, head football coach, Michael White, head basketball coach, Cam Newbauer, the women's basketball coach, as well as Tim Brewster getting a pay uh, increase, Garrick McGee getting his salary announced, Wesley McGriff, and Jules Montaner's salaries were announced as well. And then finally, Christian Robinson gets a base compensation increase as well. So, Nick, why don't you break down some of those numbers for us? You, you wrote a great article on Gator Storatory about uh, those numbers, and then let's dive into them. Um, yeah, I mean, this goes back with Dan, um, goes back to the flirting uh, which I think was literally just Jimmy Sexton texting Adam Schefter before uh, Schefter went on, on air on NFL Live saying, hey, Dan Mullen might want to go to the NFL. And then all of a sudden there's smoke. Um, you know, I would love to date Jennifer Aniston. And I don't think I'm going to because I don't think she shares the interest. I think there was uh, negotiating interest on Jimmy Sexton's part in behalf of Dan Mullen. And uh, for the most part, Dan spent – the 2020 football season uh, either on probation or with his foot in his mouth um, or both. So there wasn't a lot of negotiating leverage for Dan. So one text from Jimmy Sexton to Adam Schefter, and now you've got some negotiating power. And uh, Dan, I think, I think the, the, to me, it, it's, this was coming. Like I said uh, on the last podcast, Dan signed a six year deal. He was three years into that. You always want your coach to be your head coach to be on at least a four year contract. So Dan was due for a an extension, and with that is going to come a raise. Um, so I think now uh, with his raise, he is the fifth highest paid head football coach in the country. Yes, correct. Nick Saban makes nine point one. Ed Orgeron makes eight, a little over eight six. Dabo Sweeney makes over eight point two. And Jim Harbaugh makes just over eight million. So Dan comes in um, as the fifth highest paid coach in the country. I'm holding his term sheet here. He's going to be making seven point six million dollars a year uh, with this new deal. He gets a signing bonus of a half a million dollars on July first, and um, on December first, he'll get a fat million dollar check as a retention bonus. So, so Nick, talk to us a little bit about any of the out clauses that he potentially has as well, because I know obviously you talked about some flirtation with the NFL, but what do those out clauses look like? Yeah, there's just a blanket clause. So um, if there's termination by the University Athletic Association, the UAA, without cause, Dan will get $12 million. So it's a $12 million buyout with half of that paid within 30 days of the contract being terminated. And then the remaining of the, the remaining six million being paid over a six year period, um, or the value of the guaranteed compensation through term of agreement, whichever is less. So that means if the rest of his contract is less than twelve million dollars, he just gets the rest of his contract. But if you look at it, it's seven point six million dollars a year. That means he would get fired. You know, if he got fired without cause anytime before the twenty twenty six season ended. Florida would have to pay him $12 million. Mm. Any other if, thing? Oh, go ahead. If Mullen wants to terminate the contract without cause, um, he owes the university $2 million. But that's it. That's, that, that's that it. seems low compared to, to what 
we're used to and accustomed to this day and age. Um, Nick, I, I know that this information came out uh, via Freedom of Information Act. Do we know when this deal was was done or when it was finalized? So um, this was this was talked about prior to the 2020 season, but shelved because of COVID. Um, like I said yesterday, Silk got caught off guard, but all the incentives. So, like, if I look at um, Mike White's contract here, like, if the academic achievement bonus, for instance, if the team has an APR of 965 or higher, he gets a million dollars. There's incentives built in. If, if Mike White or Dan wins the SEC championship, there's, there's bonus money. I didn't print that out. I'd have to go digging through the contract again to grab it. Um, but just things like that. Winning the East, he gets a bonus. Winning the SEC gets a bonus. Going to a New Year's Six Bowl, you get a bonus. Going to the playoff is a bonus. Winning a playoff game is another bonus. Um, so there's more money built in and structured into the contract um, that was just taken off the table because of COVID. And um, all the coaches across the board agreed to that addendum um, prior to playing. Um, and all that stuff is now back in play. All right. Well, let's get into the nuts and, nuts and bolts. People aren't listening to our show just for, um, for facts and figures. Uh, we want to get some opinions. Uh, Silk, any thoughts that you have uh, on this extension? Uh, I think Dan Mullins is is overdue uh, for recruiting purposes and program. Uh, if, it, if this is our guy for the long haul, we need to uh, get some more years on his belt or not. That we, some other school can negative recruit that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I like where he's paid at. Uh, we should. Uh, I like our, our assistants getting extensions. I'm not mad at any of those guys getting paid more money. Um, so I'm with it. Uh, you know where I stand with the Blanco extension. I don't think I got a deep dive on that. He's getting ratio to hell on Twitter right now, <laughs> bro. I'm, I'm getting, I'm like, I'm getting ratioed. That's exactly- just that's like that's like you walking outside and yelling at the mailman for bringing like the water bill. Like, hey man, <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't run that. I didn't run thirty baths last they month. Know, they know where you. They know where you're at with the Mike White Hive. I'm just bringing the bills, man. Yeah. I'm getting, yelled at. I'm getting ratioed over yeah. here. Yeah, old, old Nick lead, leading the Mike White Hive. He's the queen bee. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so no, I, I agree. Uh, Nick, you mentioned it earlier. You never want your head coach to be under, uh, you know, four years just cause there's an opportunity for, for negative recruiting uh, to happen. Uh, I guess my, my biggest question mark is uh, what's the commitment look like? Obviously Dan Mullen has flirted with the NFL before. Will this stop that potential flirtation? If we say that this conversation happened, back last year and that was shelved due to COVID uh, and those conversations were happening even after COVID before the season uh, started. Uh, I still have some question marks about Dan Mullins, you know, complete willingness to be hundred percent bought in. And that's not just to the university of Florida. And I'm not saying that Dan Mullins not bought in, uh, but if you're saying these conversations happened in 2020, they were shelved uh, and now they're, they're official. Does Dan Mullen continue to flirt or is this, you know, a number that he's happy with? Uh, in a situation that he's happy with as well. I think a, a lot of his flirtation um, last year was not having that extension. But if we're saying that the, the extension was talked about, right, last year and was only shelved because of COVID and all of these numbers are prob- probably the same as they were before, right, Nick, that's you're saying that this deal was pretty much almost set in stone before COVID. Um, and now that, you know, COVID is over, we're, we're getting this finalized that there's still flirtation, right? I mean, it's still it's still got to negotiate until the, until the contract signed. Like whatever numbers is there is there. But if you can use some leverage to get more money, of course. Like that's why I, I think a lot of that was him trying to get leverage. It was it was this uh, whole thing was a leverage play because like you can be you can talk about it and hey we have these numbers well well yeah and then in the middle of a pandemic you said you know that the the Russian army was at Texas A and M yelling at you <laughs> when they shouldn't have been. And then you double down on it Monday, yell that you need to pack the swamp. You're on probation already for recruiting violations. The president of the university is surely not happy with you, and he's got to sign off on a deal. So until the ink is the ink is dry on the paper, yeah, because you know, there was some unrest still on. Yeah, there was some unrest and some smoke amongst the uh, administration and Dan. So he would have been crazy not to have been flirting around with other jobs yeah. per se. Like I said, flirting, you know, dating's got you can flirt, dating's gotta go two ways. And I don't think yeah, nobody was flirting with him Dan. Back. Mm-hmm. I don't think Dan I don't think the NFL wanted Dan the way that Dan wanted the NFL, or at least 
Jimmy Sexton wanted people to think that the NFL wanted Dan. The, the, the Dark Vader office is not going to work in the, in the well, Big Boy come League. Come on now. That was, that was, was subjectively hilarious. Like funny. Yeah, not I love Objectively that. funny. That was subjectively funny. And, um, and people got mad about that. That was dumb to be mad about. There's so many things to be mad about. That was just not one of them. So, I mean, I think that we're all in agreement on the demo extension had to happen. A lot of people, there's a few people on Twitter that for some reason just like to live in, in negative world or kind of bemoaning this and saying that UF is accepting mediocrity. I don't think that they are. I think that Florida has shown and they will always show that they have money to make the moves that they need to make, whether it was, you know, firing, you know, Will Muschamp yeah, or Jim McElwain. Extensions don't mean a lot. <laughs> yeah, extension extension clauses mean a lot, but the actual extension, uh, I mean, we, we all seen somebody get extension to get fired the next year. It means – Nothing also, in the grand scheme. Also, I would say, you know, with Dan Mullen's buyout clause only being $2 million, it's it's one thing or the other. It's that Florida doesn't believe that he's truly going to leave. And if he does, then it's probably in both parties' best interest. Uh, because $2 million for a coach like Dan Mullen, who's the third right. high, or fifth highest paying coach, um, that doesn't that doesn't add up. So well, fourth, I don't think the fourth, fourth, I forgot that Harbaugh right. took. Remember, Harbaugh was like on the hot seat. He just took a get. They they have his his contract. He makes like four million dollars a year now. Oh, that, that's right. Okay, so, so the fourth so highest Dan's behind is two million dollar buyout. Yeah, Dan's behind um, Saban, Sweeney, and Ed O. National champions, National third champion. best team in the SEC. National champion Ed O. <laughs> that's what we talked about. Um, other news on Florida Gators um, coaching: Tim Brewster's compensation was increased to four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Uh, Christian Robinson's base compensation was increased to three hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Tim Brewster, I feel like, has earned um, that money back just in in recruiting alone. Obviously, you get a, a tight end, the Mackey Award. Uh, you put him as the highest drafted tight end in the country. You're going to get paid uh, substantially more money. And then Christian Robinson, who just four years ago was making eighty thousand dollars at the University of Florida, is now up to three hundred ninety thousand dollars and did flirt. Uh, with the University of Michigan last year. Any thoughts on either of those two guys? I think part of Christian's bump was in response to, hey, he's going to, he, he's going to, he could go somewhere and is going to garner interest. Um, but that's not me saying it wasn't deserved. I think he's, he's earned, um, yeah, you know, I'm not, I don't want to hate on nobody's <laughs> pockets, but I think he need to get that room together and they need to be a little bit more productive. Dueling yeah. takes. What about you, Daniel? Uh, no, I think that the room, I when Christian Robinson started, I really like him as a person, but when he started, his recruiting was was on fire, um, landed a lot of great names. Uh, I'm on no, the he side of the recruit. Silk. He got some right. dogs. He right, I'm on the Silk side that, yeah. you know, we, we've had a lot of, you know, names come onto campus. You know, I think Ventral Miller – um, is a guy that, you know, needs to take that big step up. But I also think Derek Wingo, Tyron Hopper, these guys that were all world and being recruited by everybody still haven't had the chance to do much yet. So I I'm waiting to see those develop. I don't think $390,000 is a waste of money, uh, but no, I, also, no. um, I also don't, uh, you know, I'm not 100% sold on, on him either. And then finally on the football coaching staff, uh, Garrick McGee, who moves from being a quality assistant our quality uh, assurance coach, a quality control coach, uh, moves up to three hundred ninety thousand dollars. Wesley McGriff, the new safeties coach, is at four hundred fifty thousand, and then Jules Montaner is going to round out the staff with the lowest salary at two hundred fifty thousand, but still uh, quite a big of a quite a bit of a jump from his uh, salary at, at USF. Jordan Jules. Hey, we gotta get Jules some love. He out here getting buckets. I tried yep. to last show, but my internet was messed up. Uh, a lot of Gator <laughs> fans wanted T Rob. T Rob has been pissing the bed down in Dade County. Um, the, the hire of Jules was criticized by a lot of people. We all, not we all, but a lot of people wanted T Rob. Right now, Jules is doing what they do. Yep. Transfer, kid out of Texas. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the recruits are, are mentioning him as well. You know, Florida has a big recruiting right. day that started uh, today, June 1st. A number of folks on campus today, a ton this weekend. So we'll continue to see, you know, if Jules Montaner uh, continues to, to grow his stature as a recruiter. Before we move on to Mike White, I know, Silk, you've got some uh, exciting topics to talk about about Mike White. Uh, do we want mm -hmm. to talk about anything else about, um, about the football staff? Nah, man. Yeah, they got these boys locked up for some more years. So, you know, let's kill it on the, tr on, on, on the trail. Big day today. 
Big day, big day. All right, and big news that everybody wants to talk about. Uh, Gators also extended basketball coach Mike White. Um, Nick, talk to us a little bit about those numbers. All right, so Mike White, um, just average over the next six years, he will make on average $3.187 million. Um, over six years, it's a $19.1 million contract. Um, base salary – for what year am I at? I'm looking at this like contract sheet here. Um, base salary for next year is 450,000. That remains the same throughout the length of the contract. Uh, and then there's 1.3 million that they have all, you know, the Mike White show, the Gator talk shows they have to do. Um, so everything comes out to, uh, you know, just that uh, roughly that $3.18 million deal. Um, I think what goes into, <clears throat> um, Mike White's extension is uh, at least in big part of it um, is that he does things the right way. And uh, I mean, you can look at LSU and, and Will Wade's strong ass offer. Um, and, and, and I mean, Billy, Don it's not new in college basketball. Billy Donovan didn't like the way recruiting was happening. And, and that's why he got out of the college game um, years ago. Uh, and Florida went on probation. I think it was in the late eighties. Um, Said that would never happen again. Football program figured how to do that out in, in 2020. Um, and I think there's a, a sense of Mike White can figure it inside Florida. Mike White can figure it out. He's a good young basketball coach, and we don't have to worry about him getting us in trouble um, through recruiting violations, which are rampant through college basketball. When the FBI is getting involved in uh, your recruiting practices, then you know you guys are getting getting after it. You're getting it in on the recruiting trail. Um, am I surprised that he got extended a little bit? Cause you know, you really, he was under contract through 2025 and I don't know if it's the same kind of deal in terms of negative recruiting on the basketball end as it is on football. If your coach isn't on, you know, it doesn't have four more years left. Um, but technically he was under contract through uh, for three more year or for four more years and then, you know, got two. So he'll be under contract until, uh, April of 2027. Um, and then we already hit, uh, did I already hit the uh, buyout stuff? No, not yet. Okay. Termination by UF without cause. Mike White will get $1.75 million a year uh, for every year left on the contract, but that's with mitigation for other income. So if he goes and gets the job at Tulsa or gets the job at Georgia, um, and they give him a million dollar a year contract. Florida would only pay him what the difference is between that 1.75 and his new salary. Mike White can leave at any point uh, without cause, and he owes two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year per year left on his contract to the university if he leaves. Perfect. So, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I don't know why we extend him that long. Show me the money. He didn't get a raise. He didn't get a raise. Everything stayed the same. It was just extended. Hmm. I'm not surprised. I, I think Strickland had expressed. Uh, sorry, my mouth is all jacked up. Uh, Strickland has expressed. He expressed his um, what that he liked Mike White, um, mm. and then the status of the program that that he liked where he was at, and and the progress that Mike White was making. Um, so I'm not surprised by extension at all. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm disappointed. I guess not. I guess I'm just disappointed in, in the situation. And we talked about how extensions don't really matter. So in the grand scheme of things, I don't think that this matters all that much because you never really ever let a coach just get to the end of their contract and then just decide to you know not renew. It just happens so seldomly. Uh, you know, but the way that I look at Florida is, you know, Mike White is. 123. I, I think that that's below where he should be. He's 63 and 43, which is below a 600 winning percentage in um, the SEC. And during his time at UF, he's been eighth, second, third, eighth, fourth, fifth. So I don't really even see any improvement in terms of what he's doing. Um, you know, he's been to the NCAA you know, tournament, what, five years um, in a row. Obviously, you know, the 2019, 2020 season was canceled, but he went elite eight. Round of 32, round of 32, canceled, round of 32. So I don't know if 
that's indicative of the program that, you know, Florida is going to be, which if they are, then that's what they are. But, you know, I think that Florida can be better. I think that Mike White recruits, you know, really well for a program that continuously struggles against, you know, teams that they should beat. Um, and in the tournament, you know, I think if Florida really wants to be the premier athletic department in the Southeast, the SEC, or in the country, that they need to step up there. And I don't think that Mike White's the guy to, to lead the team into the future. Now, bring on two new assistants, we'll see, but I just don't think that this is the, the coach to lead them. Again, extensions don't mean much. They're not giving him a promotion, but it is a PR, you know, move to say, hey, that we're at least bought into to you as a head coach. I mean, there were, there were some – excuses kind of built in. I mean, he got stuck in recruiting with John Igbunu because Igbunu got hurt and he's going to come back and, and okay, well, we don't recruit big because we're going to get Igbunu back. And then that turns into a two-year injury. And now that's two recruiting cycles. Um, obviously last year, you literally built everything offensively around one player because that player was good enough to warrant that. And then, you know, like three years or three games or however many games, five games into the, into the season, you've got to figure it all out again. Um, I, I think the biggest issue is you need to be competing for SEC championships. And I don't, haven't seen that. So that's my issue um, with, with Mike White, but looking at the deal, it's not an extension. Um, and if you fire him, you're going to be paying him less than, than you're keeping him on. So to me, it doesn't, it's an extension, but it wouldn't stop Florida from making a move away from Mike White. I don't think Scott Strickland is looking to make a move away from Mike White. I think, in fact, he's hoping uh, that Mike White, you know, proves his value. And if he does, that you're probably getting, you know, a discount on Mike White by the time 2025, 26, 27 comes around. Yeah, in, I mean, in Scott's mind, he's hoping Mike White becomes the coach or is the coach he thinks he is, and then by the time you get to the last three years of this contract, you're you're getting a deal um, on him. Yeah, maybe. I, I just don't know how many programs that are out there are going to be able to throw a hell of a lot more money than Florida could throw at a basketball coach, right? I, I mean, unless he really completely changes, you know, his trajectory. Your Dukes, your North Carolinas, your Kansas, your you know, your huge programs probably aren't going to go after him. And if so, how much money is it possibly? It's all within the realm of what Florida would be able to pay. So maybe they are getting a discount and maybe because they're spending all this money elsewhere, they're trying to, you know, cut some corners where they can. Again, extension doesn't necessarily mean a lot, but at the end of the day, I don't think Florida um, from a PR standpoint is, is helping their cause and saying, hey, we expect and want excellence uh, here and out of our coaches. But, and then finally, with that news, unless you guys have anything else, Cameron Neubauer, uh, who is the uh, women's college, uh, or with the women's, yeah, obviously, college, the women's <laughs> basketball coach, uh, Florida struggled a bit last year um, in basketball. They were knocked out in the second round of the um, NIT. He is getting his top scorer back. He's getting his best player back from last year. And obviously we talked about it on the podcast is getting one of the best players in the country um, from Louisiana, the Gatorade national player of the year there. So long story short, he's going to be extended. Um, he's getting a, a bit of an increase in salary, I believe as well. Uh, but he is just 46 and 71, 15 and 47 in the sec uh, play, including um, three, three, win seasons in the sec in four years. So um, I, again, He's building the program, but uh, again, it's it's an interesting standard uh, to offer an extension. Silk, so, I know you got strong opinions on women on the four year women's basketball team. Oh uh, no, no, no! You guys got me. My mouth is too numb for takes for this. Uh, same. Okay, very good. Well, I don't, I don't think that there's a, um, a ton to, to talk about there. So congratulations to all the new coach and all of their new money. Hopefully you guys will be able to spend it at what? Embers, right, Nick? That's the restaurant that you recommend? Yeah, Embers. Yeah. We got to stop shouting. I got I to gotta, I gotta call them. We got to get – that's right. So no, go no enjoy free ads. It. Yeah, go no enjoy it ads. at Mark's Prime, right? Um, all right, boys. Good emergency pod. So I hope you feel better soon. Nick, we'll see you soon. And uh, go Gators. I feel great right now, by the way.
<laughs> oh, I, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't feel your face. I bet you feel great. Yeah, yeah for sure. All right. Same corner, same time. No, I can't feel my face when I'm with you. All right. See you guys. You have now arrived at Stadium and Gale.
This is my blues And cause I'm back down on my own again This is the blues I'm playing Yes, it's a fine old thing When the night is cold and low This is a dollar bill beat. Was it the money that made me a savage? Popping them pipes and I made it a habit Towing them pictures and serving them addicts That was exciting to me I'm so excited to be Started with nothing, we had to inspire to be Niggas they fly to me I'm getting to it, feel like the man I got the plan I call the shooters, they out with the van Play with the squad, get piled like a sand Piled like a perk, I'm going here I'm going crazy on niggas Too wavy for niggas, do magic like I look a sand I'm in the kitchen, compressing the bird Take out a nine and I sell it for 30 The shred to the two love bus in the road Do me one favor, take a few steps back, back down on my own again. and look at yourself. Matter of fact, take yourself outside your body and then look at yourself and see how you playing yourself, nigga. This is the blues I'm playing. Congratulations. It's the motherfucking chase. Yes, it's a final you feel me? thing. When the night we on is it. cold and low. Gave you the plug Try to be real with some niggas and put on my money and show us some love You did me a favor, I knew you was shy, say I knew you would show you was It's only a matter of time for niggas get lying and hit with them slugs Get found in the pool of your blood Yeah, nigga Remember they told me that we a fail Remember they said it we a CSL Dead with that to me like Cam Newton I'm in the field like the NFL Niggas is sick and I wish him well I made a wish and a wish him well I put a brick in a wish him well Been through some shit and I'm sick of jail No disease but I'm sick of cells Sick of tired of sending niggas mail Calling niggas just to get a bell I just seen a nigga get a L Never coming home, minute on the phone Sick of tired of seeing niggas fail Sick of tired of seeing niggas lose Sending like we trying to get to hell Cause I'm back down on my own again This is the blues I'm playing Yes, it's a fine old thing When the night is cold and lonely